Oh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Reggie Hammond, and I am uh, the managing partner for Your Crescendo. We've been excited to be on this journey with the uh, Metro Atlanta Land Bank for the last uh, year or so to um, articulate their strategic plan um, and to build to, to build and grow their brand uh, with stakeholders like yourself. Part of um, the initiative to um, build, build the brand for the land bank is to build awareness with stakeholders. That includes investors, um, community development partners, nonprofits that have missions aligned with the work of the land bank. And this is the second of a monthly series that we've put in place that will be, and just please make a note for yourself, these will always be on the fourth Mondays um, at noon. So we hope you brought your brown bag lunch. Uh, you are at your desk and settled in um, and will join us for this really important um, conversation in a webinar around the uh, strategic plan that we cast which is really uh, our purpose, our plan, our vision, and what that means for you as a stakeholder for the land bank or a prospective stakeholder as a land bank. <coughs> Excuse me. So without further ado, I will introduce to you the executive director for the Metro Atlanta Land Bank, Mr. Chris Norman, and he will um, share the presentation for today. Chris, take it away. Thank you, Reggie. Welcome, everyone. Glad you can make time in your day to join us for this lunch and learn. As Reggie said, this is something we decided would be a good, a good idea uh, to do this on a monthly basis. It really kind of just allow people to learn more about the, the land bank in a more relaxed setting. And we're going to pick topics uh, each month and just kind of drill down a little bit. And so the format is, you know, we're going to go through and kind of give you an overview today of our strategic plan, strategic articulation that Reggie spoke about and helped us with. And then when we finish up that 30 minute interval, we'll kind of sit back and we'll take questions. So hopefully you guys have questions and hopefully you have your, your sandwich so you can kind of comfortably move along. Uh, so if you do have questions, please place those in the chat and Reggie will help me to monitor that and make sure that we get everybody uh, accounted for. So. Um, and I do see that um, someone asked about the recording. So these are being posted to our website and that is at metroatlantalandbank.org. So having said that, I will just go ahead and move right into the presentation. So over a year ago, uh, Reggie's group, uh, your crescendo group, basically we engaged them to help us Put together our strategic plan. You know, the land bank has been around since 1991, and obviously you can't have the same plan for that long of a duration. And so, just as a little bit of context, we're the fourth oldest land bank in the United States. There are almost 200 now. So we were one of the first, uh, the pioneers of this land banking concept here in Atlanta. And so Reggie took everybody. We gathered over there at the, the uh, Russell Center for Innovation. Uh, in the, the, the Atlanta University Center neighborhood. And you can see that we had full attendance here as, as indicated by the photos. And, and so the full staff, the full board uh, gathered and we spent an entire day just really thinking and talking about what we wanted to become and what we wanted to accomplish. And so, so having that been approved and put in place, we felt today would be a good opportunity to kind of sit back and kind of walk you guys through this as we, as we move along. So. So what we did, we wanted to identify, you know, like, like anyone, what are the things that you do well? What are the things that you uh, really like to do? And then what are the things that really drive you to continue doing what you do? And so uh, the strategic articulation in this document is available as well uh, on the website, it kind of really breaks down these categories for us. And you, you kind of see the, the strengths, you know, things such as, you know, dealing with property, dealing with uh, particularly non-productive property. You know, our whole goal is really to deal with those types of properties, assets that really people are kind of, they're languishing there and we want to move into something that's a little bit more productive. And we also want to partner with everyone 
at the table to basically collaboratively move these these projects forward. So, so things we we do well, you know, I think we're fairly focused. We we really do focus on these these properties to bring them tax back to a tax producing status. Uh, you know, we we have a lot of power uh, and authority. Scan the entirety of the city of Atlanta in terms of our footprint for which we're able to do work. Uh, and so over this almost 25 plus years of operation, uh, we think we have developed some really valid strengths. We really do like uh, trying to find opportunities to help our communities, particularly ones that are have been overlooked, that are distressed, or that are transitioning, to help them become evolve into those next uh, generation uh, communities that we all want to have around us and to live in and to participate in. And so that really drives us to solve these challenges that basically pertain to these, these communities and to these properties and to find solutions. And at the end of the day, it's about helping people. It's, it goes beyond just the dirt and, the, and the, the, the nails and the boards, but it's really at the end of the day, these are people that are occupying either homes or businesses or playing in our parks. And that's what we really are focused on because we want to be able to provide you know, safe, secure housing, lead more stable lives, uh, and then just really have a, 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 a long-term impact on these communities that we basically um, participate in. So our purpose is laid out in our documents, particularly ones that kind of pertain to how we were started. Uh, you know, I've already spoken to the fact that we are really on the side of the continuum where we look at acquiring the property, you know, controlling the dirt, uh, such that we can really deal with these, these, these categories of property and then in turn do something with it. But you'll see in this, in this uh, slide here really speaks to the fact that we have the full latitude of a real estate entity to do anything and all things with real estate. So we can buy, we can sell, we can manage, we can actually develop property if we choose to. Historically, that has not been something that we have tried to do. We really tried to focus on acquiring or facilitating transition of these properties to stakeholders, to developers, to nonprofits, to for-profits, to government partners to get them back online. And so that's something that we, we one of our main purposes. And again, return them to the generating uh, uh, status. And then lastly, though, extinguishing past due tax liens. So one thing that people uh, try to understand is that, well, does the land bank have any special powers? Well, one superpower or special power that we do have is the ability to extinguish past due taxes. And why is that important? So the whole idea of land banks came about because 30 years ago, properties were, uh, people were leaving city cores and they would leave them held property and the tax bills kept coming. And of course, then you end up having a very large tax bill and you might have a depreciated asset. And sometimes the taxes were more than the property was worth. So you needed a mechanism to clear those taxes. And so a land bank by state statute has a legal authority to wipe out past due taxes and these are ad valorem taxes. These are not federal taxes or these are not state. These are local property taxes uh, on any piece of property for any amount and for any number of years. Now, of course that comes with, since that's a, such a strong power, it comes with, it requires the approval of our board and it requires consent by the Atlanta school system. Or if we had property in Fulton County, it would be the Fulton County school system. So that is something that has really been exercised over the long history of the land bank authority uh, to great success. And so as we do these things, well, what are we gonna start reporting out? Now, we're gonna start reporting out specifically on this dashboard that we are creating and, and you'll, you'll start saying, you know, what do we have, the number of properties, how many have been disposed, what's the current value of our portfolio? Hopefully these are creating new tax revenue, you know, what's the incremental tax revenue that's been created? And then how many housing units are created? You know, these are things that, again, speak to our main motivations and why we do what we want that we, we, we say we're, we're driven to do. And then secondarily, you know, you can see these other attributes that basically we hope to accomplish in terms of just investment. Hope um, we, we expect property values to increase once you basically part with developers to improve properties, uh, the, the value should go up. Uh, we hope that, um, uh, you know, we want to track the demographics and we want to track the funding uh, that's utilized to run the land bank, both from a public and a private sector source. So these are things that will be, you'll start seeing more in a very digestible format uh, going forward. And so the vision is we want vibrant communities, affordable housing and economic opportunities. So you see those in our byline and our new logo 
and our tagline, because these are all things that support what we are really focused on. And so to accomplish these things, we're talking about doing market and affordable housing, uh, public space and new industry and jobs for all citizens in the city of Atlanta, the county, and that would also apply for any new potential partners to the land bank. So per the legislation, this is really kind of repetitive to what I've already mentioned. This is the, the actual legal uh, description in our legislative uh, origins that speaks to what we do. But we also want to, as we do this, we want to have the exceptional land bank. We want to be the best practice in all land banks in the region across the country. So that's something we, we look to do. So you'll see the Fulton County Save Atlanta Land Bank Authority name there. That remains our legal name, but we do business as the Metro Atlanta Land Bank. And that's why you see going forward, you'll see us referred to as Metro Atlanta Land Bank. So as we do this type of work, as you know, with any organization, uh, you have to have something that kind of guides you, right? So what, what are your core beliefs and what are your core principles? So these are the seven that we have lifted up uh, that we're basically uh, focused on. Um, you know, transparency, accountability, professionalism, uh, thoroughness, customer focus, collaboration, innovation. Uh, there is one additional one of equity. Uh, and so we have also uh, agree that you know equity is important for us and you've heard a lot of that conversation throughout the city and that's something that we have adopted as one of our principles as, as well going forward. So Reggie's team helped us to kind of sit back and think through what do we want to do in kind of a, a, a linear basis you know in a, in, a, in a time frame format. So if we're looking down the road you know five years from now and this has been a little setback because of COVID. So we'll, we'll think 2024 slash 2025. As you think about these things, as 2020 was like most people, we were trying to re resetting how we were going to do work, but we're still moving forward and actively working uh, as an organization. So if we look down the road five years from now, what do we want to be able to report out? So we want to report out that we have actually engaged in demonstration of the delivery of some mixed income communities. We've also spoken to the fact that we wanted to have some mixed age communities. You know, theoretically, uh, the, you know, theoretically the, the, the land bank wants to go out of business, right? This is a joke I always say when I go around the, the, the state and say, well, what's the ultimate goal of a land bank? Well, the ultimate goal of a land bank is to, if you've eliminated blight and you've eliminated impediments to development, then the land bank shows sunset. Well, unfortunately, most land banks across the United States have not reached that point of success just yet. We've been at it since 1991, but we have done a lot of tremendous work and we'll continue to focus on that. And then if we keep a tally, this is thinking big, if things were like best, best case scenario, could we have delivered a thousand affordable units in, 20, in, in five years? So that's still a long moonshot goal for the land bank. And so, and these will obviously create very vibrant communities. We want to also partner long-term to help uh, some developers deal with food desert issues that we know uh, persist in, in that area. Uh, we also want to be more regional. So we call ourselves a Metro Atlanta Land Bank because of Fulton County, being in Fulton County, we actually have the ability to allow other cities in the county to join. And we've actually have interest from other cities surrounding Atlanta to join. And so we're looking into expanding the footprint of the land bank to include uh, our partner cities uh, in Fulton County. And, and then also, can we convert 1500 properties? And that's not just housing units, that would be for commercial as well as public space. And at the end of the day, in terms of economic opportunity, we can deal with residential property, we can deal with commercial property, and we can deal with industrial property. We have typically focused on residential, but we do want to take a a stab at some commercial uh, uh, redevelopment, revitalization opportunities. And so that's one thing we wanna deliver five years from now that we've also can say, we worked on a commercial project and hopefully help to deliver that. And so if we think all of these things in a very you know grand scale, if we can do all these things, we have tr delivered tremendous value, we think, to the community and to our stakeholders. So, so we've kind of, if you look at this, this kind of breaks it down into categorically speaking about the, the, the three elements of the land bank in, in terms of focus, you know, 
this think big, start small, scale fast. Um, so there's a little bit of an inversion here. So the middle column is really where we are today, right? So this is starting small. This is 2020 slash 2021. This is making sure that everybody is on board in terms of what we're about. We've already been conversations I mentioned before, you know, East Point, College Park, have indicated they, they would like to join. So can we uh, bring these communities on board? And I'm doing that in the next two years, let's say 2022, 2023, uh, then we've started doing some place-based assemb place assemblage on streets, specifically streets. Uh, we're turning blighted streets into revitalized streets. Uh, we're basically trying to do anything we can do to have density improvement. Uh, if we can also find opportunities to include solar, you know, the next generation of green energy and renew renewable energy, is that something that we can do? Uh, and then also, you know, hosting investment workshops. This is not investment as in the stock market, but basically working with uh, folks that are interested in how can you create uh, wealth via real estate in a practical sense while delivering affordable housing and basically leveraging those opportunities. And then also, you know, a lot of churches in our community have properties. In some cases, these properties are undeveloped and, and, and underutilized. Can we work with them to assist them also to bring those properties along? And all this whole focus is on the community, the vibrancy of the community, which is moving beyond property that's not being productive and doing things that are basically more productive. And thank you, our moonshot again. The think big is a really, really big one. And I've already kind of talked about that one before. So if we, we this, this drill down a little bit more. So we'll talk about the, um, and I know you guys are, are, are sending some chat questions. And so we'll, we will deal with those uh, towards the end. So affordable housing. This is a key component of what we do. Uh, where we do focus on affordable housing, we can do market housing. So I don't want people to lose sight of that. So, so our starting small. So we basically want to start, um, you know, moving properties to our, our CDC partners, our community development corps to do that. You know, we are uh, trying to do a multiple housing development. So, so in the next you know, year or two, we want to basically move forward with at least one major housing development, two or three. Uh, and then also have focus on a block. And we talked about you know, street and, and place-based strategies. We really wanna make a, a concerted effort to start focus on acquiring property in specific geographic areas and delivering that and turning those around. And then we start looking what two to three years from now. And at that point, we're really trying to say this really ramping up this notion of uh, place-based revitalization dealing with corridors. And this is going to deal with residential and commercial property. Uh, one thing we are also looking at is a pilot, which is a payment in lieu of taxes. Uh, and that's actually a typo uh, there in, in, in that lapse is lieu. Um, so this is something that will be an innovative uh, strategy to, to offsetting uh, tax burden for our affordable uh, housing properties uh, and developments that we can we can move forward. And then um, the last uh, bullet here, uh, here is the part with the LIHTC developers. And LIHTC is a low income housing tax credit developer. And so we are looking at investigating, are there additional innovative ways that the land bank can work to utilize our tax exempt status uh, to work with LIHTC developers to, to reduce their cost burden and, and to basically deliver properties there. So. And then thinking big, again, thinking big is the long-term, you know, big goal. Uh, and so can we have done two food deserts uh, in, in five years, right? Uh, can we um, deliver 18 units of housing in formerly blighted areas? And can we have gotten to that 1500 property? Potentially, yes. And there are a few typos in here, so I apologize uh, for that. Economic opportunity, which is our last vertical, and then we kind of do a quick run over of some of the, the specifics. Uh, this speaks to, as we were turning these properties around and we bring in commercial and residential properties forward, this really gets to uh, creating economic opportunity and vibrancy. So when we scale fast, so start small, we kind of talked about, but let me drill down here. So one thing we also realize is that we need private capital, we need control capital within the confines of the land bank to basically move our, our projects forward. So we have actually set a goal to try in the next year, 18 months, to have about $10 million under control of the land bank authority 
in which we can do acquisitions. Uh, and we're working on that as we speak. Uh, and along with that, we wanna acquire our first commercial property, uh, which could be like a small strip center uh, or some type of a multifamily uh, property. So we're looking, looking at that. And so that's something that we're looking into. We also realize that this, this COVID downturn is going to impact the market. And can we be positioned to basically uh, acquire property in a productive manner to bring those properties back to what we, we all would like? And so as we look down the road, okay, two or three years, now what is it going to translate to? So then we start basically creating more operating capital for land bank. Our whole posture is very entrepreneurial and we understand that the city and the county will probably not be able to fund us to the degree we, we really need. So we're actually looking to supplement that with entrepreneurial capital and we can do that. Uh, and that comes along with being very creative and we're a very creative team. And I think we'll do that. Uh, and so that, that's, that's one thing. Uh, so then we start talking about, you know, think big. Uh, again, let's talk about commercial property as an adjunct to our uh, residential property. So, so things we have to do for, do differently. Because one thing about when you change and when you move a, an entity or a program forward, you have to look in the future and you have to basically stop doing the things that you've done in the past if you want to make some progress. And so, uh, so this is part of one of the reasons we're having this land bank series is we want to make sure that people understand who we are, what we can do, not just the things you hear on the street, but actually hear it directly from our from us. What is what is possible? Uh, and so one thing we recognize that we are in the uh, new uh, 21st century where we need to, need to have a social media uh, relationship. And so we have launched, you can see, we have a presence now on LinkedIn and, and, and Instagram and Facebook. And so now you can, that will hopefully raise the profile and allow people to have more interaction with the land bank. Um, we are working with the Georgia Association of Land Banks, which is Galba. I actually serve as a president of that association. And so, uh, you know, we are doing macro policy efforts across the state. There are 23 land banks and there are things that we share with them. I would start doing these place-based uh, strategies you know, and start having quarterly meetings to kind of inform of what we're talking about. We're already partnering with the One Atlanta plan with the city in terms of executing the mayor's goal of reaching 20,000 units of affordable housing. So that's something we are doing. And we also know that financial, uh, Sufficiency and solvency is important to us doing our work. And so one thing we are, our goal is to have a operating reserve equal to about 12 months. Website has been redone. You see that the branding has been updated. Our name has been changed and so all these types of things. So at the end of the day for 2020 and 2021, we really focus on this brand and stakeholder engagement like today. We really focus on fund engagement and development which is revenue creation, which is this equity vehicle, $10 million. Uh, which has also enhanced our operations of the Land Bank Authority. We're adding staff. Uh, we're up to six uh, employees. We actually don't have all those filled right now. Actually, we are about to go uh, and list two jobs for an analyst and for a vacant property manager uh, within the next 30 days. And then our board continues to grow. So I won't go into all the specifics of this, but you can see this on our website if you look into the um, stakeholder agreement, but this gets down into a more tactical breakdown of the broad macro things I've spoken to before, which is how are we going to go about doing uh, strength and brand and stakeholder engagement? What does that mean? And so this, these types of these slides here actually start breaking into the specific granular tactics, right? What is going to happen? Same thing for fund development. This kind of breaks it down into, well, what particularly are you talking about? And so this is something we've given a lot of thought to, and we actually have uh, actionable items. And so you can read through this at your leisure uh, and look at that. Same thing goes for enhancing our land banking operations. You know, we just had new policies and procedures we, we basically adopted. Uh, we're working on additional programming uh, and we're really trying to uh, focus on how can we basically take us to the next level for a land bank. Uh, and then, you know, lastly, scaling the, the organization. We understand that historically we only operated with about three or four staff members. We're up to six. Uh, we want to continue to grow the organization. If we do pick up these additional cities, there could be additional growth in terms of the organization because then geographically that's a very broad area and we know that we'll need more people uh, to, to work on that. 
So this is kind of just a, a nice overview of the land bank, of what we are, have done, you know, what we're about, uh, and what we plan to plan to be. And so, uh, and we'll be able to share these slides after the fact to you guys, so you can have these at your leisure. And a lot of this will be posted to our website. And so at this point, we will open it up for any questions. And while we're taking questions, I'll leave my contact information up here in case anyone wants to follow up and, and ask that. So, so we've set aside some time to do that. And Bridget, I think we're restricting the, the questions to, is it chat and Q&A only? We're not going live, correct? No, no, we're not going live. However, I do have a question that came to, came to us in the chat, which is, All right. the chat is different than the Q&A. So we'll start with that question because I think we got it first. Um, someone asked, and this was when you were on the dashboard page, Yes. They asked, how is valuation calculated? How is valuation calculated? All right. So let me make sure that I am speaking to the slide that they that we want. So valuation. I'm assuming we're talking about value of portfolio properties and portfolio. So we'll be basically having multiple valuations. Uh, and so you'll basically be able to see value based on tax value. We know the assessor uh, does a valuation there. And then also with internally, we have uh, the, our analysts will be charged with doing uh, simulations of market value. And so you will see that as well as a valuation uh, metric uh, that will be shown. So hopefully that helps to answer that question. Okay. Um, and then just for our participants, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to type them into the Q&A. Um, the next question we have for you, Chris, is can you help with building permits and fees if we want to develop vacant lots? We do not have any special power in regards to uh, building permits and fees. Uh, you know, clearly the land bank is affiliated with the uh, the city and the county, so we have relationships with all the stakeholders in the uh, Department of Planning and, and, and Buildings permits. But we don't have a uh, there's no special lane uh, for the land bank, and so unfortunately, we don't have a, um, any type of advantage in regards to that. You guys. Okay. Um, Chris, are you? following the questions along as yeah. well? Or do you yeah. yeah, I can do that. And it'd be helpful if you could just probably read them out loud and that way everybody would be informed of the question and then I'll probably play it. <coughs> sure. So um, the next question we have is LIHTC. The low would income housing tax credit. The, oh, okay. Would this be a discount on the ground lease in exchange for an affordability period extending beyond 15 years? Right, so what we're investigating is we started with something called the Land Bank and Depository Program uh, 10 years ago. Uh, the Land Bank and Depository Program basically allow for our nonprofit partners to bank property with the land bank pre-development. And so, so what that basically allows them to do is to enjoy our tax exemption until the property is ready to go back into construction into development. And so when the property comes out, uh, that property is then back on the tax rolls. And so when you're doing affordable housing, that break in terms of your holding costs is very significant, particularly when you're dealing with low, um, low moderate income delivery. And so the thought is, can a land bank look into other ways of, of, of leveraging that? You know, in some states you do have nonprofits that basically have tax exemptions on portfolios. That's not the case in Georgia. And so we're wondering, or we're looking into, could we work with LIHTC uh, developers and basically have the property in the land bank authority via some type of lease arrangement. And that would in turn allow for the tax exemption to or reduction in taxes to kick in. And therefore, could that be an additional advantage for delivering projects to the community? Uh, because we're really focused on one, delivering affordable housing uh, and also decreasing the burden on developers to create something that's vitally needed. And so that is at its really early stage, uh, but that is something in theory of how that will work. Uh, and so uh, we'd be happy to, I think that was our partner from the city that asked that question. So we'll be interested in trying to 
drill down into that a little bit more. That's going to take a little more legal investigation and, and, and things of that nature. So. Outstanding. So the next question is, how can I purchase some properties from you? All right. So the land bank is, we're unique in terms of the fact that we do have inventory, but we are not just a normal seller of property, right? So, so we don't have an inventory like you would find on the MLS and you just walk up and give us a bid and we sell you a piece of property. All of our stuff comes with, with conditions. Uh, you see that we are a mission-driven entity. Uh, we do occasionally sell property on a surplus basis with no strings attached. That will probably be done once a year. So if you do see that, then jump on that. And that typically will be sold at market. Uh, and then you basically submit an, a, a, um, a bid like anybody else. And we would basically go with the highest uh, price there and sell that. Again, that's the rare. In the other scenarios, oftentimes we dis dispose of property via RFPs, which are requests for proposals, which means we are gonna ask who you are, are you aligned with our goals? What type of resources do you bring? Do you have a track record of delivering uh, units? And then we will, subject to the conditions of the RFP, deliver those properties to you. Uh, in some cases, the purchase price may not, it may be severely discounted, but they will come with your condition and requirement to deliver a particular type of unit. Uh, you know, and, and so these are going to be approved by our board. So you would also have to come to the board and basically um, the board would have to approve you as well. So, so just, just be, if you're gonna buy property from the land bank, you know, that is the case. There are one, one exception I will point out. If you do look at our website, you'll see that there are things called share for Marshall deeds. Share for Marshall deeds are basically, this title, that title is not clear. We do have a, a valid interest in these properties. These are basically share for Marshall deeds from the city and the county. They were transferred to the land bank. Those are available for purchase at 40% of their appraised value. You can go on our website and look at those right now. If you find one that's of interest, there's an application. So you fill out the application, uh, you do the appraisal uh, at your expense. However, we give, we'll give you financial credit for that appraisal cost and back that out of the purchase price. And then if you, the 40% is not negotiable. Uh, if that's what the appraised value is, that's the appraised value. And then you can buy that. And then once you buy that, we highly recommend you do quiet title on those pieces of property so that you can secure your interest. So that is one exception. But typically we're selling very clean title, fee simple interest, and typically is going to be through some type of um, uh, RFP or some type of pre, some laid out of requirement. So, all right. All right. Um... The next question here is, are there surveys or other information available about the properties in the land bank portfolio? So the properties, the, the share from our cities that I've spoken about, those do not have additional information beyond the parcel ID and the, the street address. Uh, those are all the due diligence that's on you to do that. In the instance that we do have properties that are under different types of programs, we may have surveys and, and all that kind of stuff available to you. Uh, when we did the neighborhood stabilization program, uh, we did have surveys and we did have title work done on those properties when we bought them, but those are more, again, getting to our traditional uh, way of disposing property, so. All right. And this might be a good time to remind people that on the new website, the link to see all the properties is always at the top header bar, there's a bright orange button that says our properties. Correct. Um, next question is, are there any requirements for applicants specifically? So again, that is a case by case basis. Uh, uh, yep, yep, yep. yep. If, if this is a if situation, situation where, where, you know, I was just getting a little double feedback. So if this is a situation where uh, if you're responding to a request for a proposal or a request for qualifications, that document will include all the specific requirements. Uh, if you're applying for a share from Archie, we still ask you some basic information about who you are. And then also if we do applications, we will typically ask some type of background information about your capacity to deliver. Uh, so we typically do not provide, we do not transfer property 
uh, to entities who have no idea who you are and your ability to deliver. Because you, you know, theory, the theory of the land bank is if we're taking non-productive property and trying to turn it around. So it doesn't really help us if we give property to somebody who's not capable of doing something with it and it remains unproductive. So we want to make sure that we are giving it to entities that can actually deliver and be a positive benefit. We don't want to continue this chain of distress. So, so it may be a little, some people may find it burdensome, uh, but we find it as a necessary uh, part of what we do. Okay. Um, the next question is, are you open to creating partnerships with other entrepreneurs slash investors to carry out some of your objectives and how would someone go about creating that relationship? So we will, we put out requests for certain portfolios. We're always interested in interesting ideas, uh, but we also are a public entity and we want to create opportunities for uh, that are fairly transparent and equally accessible. So we typically don't carve out special advantage for properties for any particular entity, That's just because good. you might have capital or something of that nature. Uh, you know, we do have one special circumstance with the Atlanta Land Trust on which we have agreed as the board to provide property to them on a specific basis, but that is in support of the overall provision of long-term permanent affordable housing in the city of Atlanta under the One Atlanta plan. But otherwise, we will always entertain some type of proposal, uh, but it may be the case that we, we put on an RFP for a type of program and then we ask for participants. So, uh, so if you have ideas, please feel free, to bring, feel free to bring those to us. I can't guarantee that we're gonna have a sole source situation where we're working exclusively uh, with anyone. Okay, um, I know you did a modular home project. How did that turn out? Uh, we did not, um, trying to see, we did not do a modular home project. Um, the land bank, uh, there has been, to my knowledge, there was one modular home project done in West Atlanta and English Avenue. I believe that property sold, uh, but we really weren't that involved in that. So. Uh, there is a, um, you may be thinking about the land trust. The land trust was pursuing a modular home project in Oakland City. Uh, that, if that's what you're thinking about, then that project has shifted to traditional stick built uh, construction and no longer modular. Okay. Um, is the land bank of oh, they're using the old acronym, Chris. So is the Metro Atlanta Land Bank targeting opportunity zones? Not in particular. Uh, Invest Atlanta has a lot of focus on, on that. They're kind of our resident experts on opportunity zones. Uh, we are a we general, are. general, so we actually, our, our geographic area is the entire boundary of the city of Atlanta. So we can go anywhere in the city. Uh, we are trying to focus our efforts on areas that are being targeted by the city by Invest Atlanta, uh, by the Beltline, by the Housing Authority, so that we can leverage our efforts. Uh, so there probably is some overlap with the opportunity zones, but we're not having a uh, laser focus on those particular areas. Okay. Um, do you have any, <coughs> excuse me, do you have any partnership opportunities for Atlanta Housing Authority landlords? Uh, we do not. Uh, so I would say if you're interested, um, there's no special lane for Atlanta housing. We do work close with, with Atlanta housing. So I guess the question would be, I'm not sure. Um, I guess the question if I think about, it, maybe they're asking, can they obtain property for us that they can use for Atlanta housing authority tenants? That may be the point of that question. Uh, but that is, if that is your question, the answer is no. Uh, however, if that is your question, that may be an interesting uh, opportunity to explore. And just that we have set something up with the Atlanta Land Trust, do we set something up with that would leverage the capabilities of the housing authority? Okay, Frank says it is my question. All right, so if that is your question, I think that is an interesting question. We have not investigated that before. 
uh, but maybe that will be something that we could actually think about and uh, in, in, in trying to do. So thanks for that question. Um, so we answered the one around opportunity zones. Yes, we did. Does the land bank also focus on bringing businesses for jobs into communities? So that is kind of a second, kind of a second outcome of what we do. So we are so looking at, uh, you, you saw I've, I've mentioned doing commercial type opportunities. So one thing we do realize that is as you revitalize the residential uh, infrastructure, there's still a need for some type of that commercial development as well. So, so the goal is if we can do adjunct acquisition and revitalization of commercial nodes, I think that will help to bring the, the jobs uh, particularly in that, that instance. But you know, Best Atlanta is really the economic opportunity uh, generated for, um, for the city. And so they, they typically are the ones with you know, corporate relocations and all those types of things, but we are looking as a secondary benefit to doing jobs. So yes, we will hope that they would generate some. Okay. Um, are there any NSP initiatives going on at this time? All right, and I'm smiling because that's my good friend, Royal. We used to be our NSP coordinator for the, for the land bank. And so uh, we have actually disposed of all the properties out of the land bank to developers for the neighborhood stabilization program. And the last ones are under finally under construction and being delivered and sold at this point. And so that should sunset that program uh, finally. Are there notification lists for the RFPs and new properties added to the Sheriff and Marshall Deeds list? So the RFPs will be announced on our website. Uh, if you do have an interest in being notified, you know, there is a, um, we'll put you onto our contact list and we'll note, notate that you are interested and make sure that you are uh, notified of those. Sheriff and Marshall Deeds, uh, that is a one-time scenario. So these are, there will be no more sheriff and marshal deeds after this current inventory is exhausted. Uh, there were 600 plus that were conveyed to the land bank between 1998 and 2001. Uh, so it's been 20 years of working through the 600 properties and we're down to like the last 80 or so. Uh, and so there'll be no more uh, once we work through that. So unfortunately uh, that's the case. And so I'll, I'll mention it once again. So the Sheriff and Marshall Deeds are basically, these are um, limited interest in properties that were basically created by some type of lien from the city and the county uh, that, that was forwarded to the land bank authority for disposition. And so those properties are scattered throughout the city. Uh, they're in our, on our website, you can find where they are. Uh, the goal is, well, the process is, if you're interested in one, there's an application that's online. If you click on the property, it will ask you, do you want to submit an application? And you can do that online. Uh, we don't take paper applications. Everything has to be online. And so it also requires you to get an appraisal done. You get an appraisal. You choose the appraiser. We don't care as long as they're licensed. Uh, and then at the end of the day, you'll have to pay 40% of the appraised value of that piece of property. And that is, um, and the cost, we will actually give you credit for the cost as well. But we also make sure you understand that these are quick claim deeds. These are, uh, these are not fee simple interest, which means you probably, have, you do have to get to quiet title just to make sure there are no competing interest on these titles. So, uh, so one, one requirement when you submit your application is for you to also do title work because we don't want people to be surprised about anything they may find on these pieces of property after they get the interest from the land bank authority. Uh, and then at that point, the property interest is yours to do with as you please. And this is one of those few instances where we don't have a requirement for ability. We urge it, but we don't have a requirement. So, so that would be the answer to that. And then, um... There is a thought, there was another question, a separate question. I think you may have addressed this, but if there's anything left, you can share it. Can you talk about the Sheriff Marshall deed again? Okay, I think that's when I, I was answering that one. Right, it was a different question. I just wanna make sure that you shared everything there was. Okay. Um, 
All right, it looks like there's a question of, um, can a public servant buy from the land bank and can we use a VA loan for financing? You can absolutely, anyone can buy property from the land bank, so there are no restrictions, but a public servant would definitely be welcome to do that. Uh, and you, we don't put restrictions on the source of capital that you use to for the acquisition. So that is absolutely acceptable to us. And then um, could you explain the various status on the website for properties disposed, reserved, reserved land banking and NSP? Absolutely. So dispose means that it's no longer under control of the land bank. It has been moved on to a partner and is basically back in production. Reserved means that that property is not available for purchase. Uh, it is being held for either some type of program that's already been designated or a use uh, at this point in time is not for sale. Reserved land banking. Land banking speaks to the relationships we have with partners in which we hold property for them under a land banking agreement. And so they are the ones that determine what they want to do with the property, not the land bank. And so we'll put a notation on those properties. If you have an interest in seeking to acquire that property or work on that property, you need to contact that agency, not the land bank. So in that case, you'll see properties being held for Invest Atlanta. You'll see properties held for ANDP, for the Atlanta Land Trust. They are the ones you will have to talk to for the ultimate disposition and not us. And NSP is Neighborhood Stabilization Program, which was a federal program that came out in 2010 uh, as a result of the foreclosure crisis. Uh, and that was a multi-billion dollar program across the United States in which we bought property that was in foreclosure and distress and conveyed those properties out to developers. All of the properties in the Neighborhood Stabilization Program have been conveyed, conveyed at this point to developers. And so they are in the final stages of basically being rehabbed and they will be sold to income qualified families for the, the requirements of the federal program. And so that's that. So that program is basically sunsetting as soon as these last few properties are sold. Uh, then there's a question, can you, re can you revisit the partnership question um, again, their phone cut out? What, your, your response. Got it. So the partnership question is, we do seek partnerships uh, occasionally based on certain programs. Uh, if you have an idea, feel free to bring that to us. As I mentioned before, we typically don't have create programs that give special advantage to folks to acquire property uh, from the land bank. Uh, we typically have RFPs and RFQs uh, because we want to be as equitable as we can about the opportunities to work with the properties that the land bank might have. Uh, there are special circumstances like the Atlanta Land Trust or other entities where we may have a, a special um, partnership or program that we create. Uh, so that was, um, uh, so that's how, how that will work. But, but, but feel free feel to bring free your ideas to us. Ideas. We'll be happy to, to talk to you. Okay. Um, I imagine there might be a couple other questions, but before you uh, leave, I'm going to ask a special request. I'm going to type this in the chat as well. Um, just to give us feedback on how useful this webinar is, we want you to answer two questions. The first question is, um, would you recommend this webinar to a friend or a colleague um, that might be a stakeholder for the land bank? And as, answer that question on a scale of zero to 10, with 10 being extremely likely that you would recommend it to a friend or colleague, and zero being not, you wouldn't recommend it at all. And then the second question is, please respond to why, why you would make that, um, that, that rating on a scale of zero to 10. I'm gonna type that question in the chat box, but is, if you are wrapping up and about to leave, please answer those two questions uh, in the chat box before you leave. All right. Um, any other questions coming in? We're still, um, we've got another couple of minutes. Still on the clock, folks, if you want to have a burning question, kind of like meet the land bank.
All right. I see the question about money and things of that nature. So all those questions can come to me. So, uh, so Leander, please reach out to Chris. Okay. And I would say this, as, as the questions are coming in and people are commenting, you know, we do understand that to achieve the goals that we're talking about for the land bank and for the city and for the county, we do understand that private sector capital and resources will play an important part. So we're definitely interested in working with find out creative ways to leverage what we can do uh, with the power of the private sector. So, um, so we are definitely interested in that. I, um... I don't think we have any other questions. Mm -hmm. I'm scanning through. Thank you all that responded to our um, quick survey question. Uh, please try to do that before you um, leave the webinar. This is very helpful for us. This is a new webinar series and we want to make sure that they're effective and informative and impactful for you as a stakeholder, uh, current or prospective uh, for the land bank. And thanks everybody for joining. I really enjoyed it. And again, we're going to keep doing these as Reggie pointed out. So we hope that um, if you have any topics of interest, you have my email here, you know, shoot it to us and, and we can kind of work that in over the next few remaining. I think we've, we've scheduled for four, four more at least. Yes. I think. Yes. So we have ample time to kind of cover a lot of territory between now and, and summer. Outstanding, yes. Well, thank you everyone. Have a great day. Again, as you're leaving, <laughs> before you close the door, uh, please give us an evaluation on, this, on the zero to 10 question. Um, and and, and the, second, the second part of that question is why. And we look forward to um, the March session details to come. Have a great day. Thank you.